Good morning, everybody, and welcome to my channel. I'm Jennifer. This is A Country Life, and I don't know about you guys, but I am kind of feeling the pressure here <laughs> over the last couple of days. So this Friday, which is the 16th of December, we are celebrating Christmas with our whole family. What I mean by that is our older kids. We have three older kids who do not live at home anymore, and so they and their husband and significant others are coming over here, our grandchildren, and we are celebrating Christmas. I am feeling the pressure. We have just come off of about 10 days of sickness and the kind of sickness that started out head cold type of symptoms went into the stomach flu style virus and then moved on to influenza style never went in and had anybody tested. I'd much rather stay out of the clinic at this time of year if possible, which isn't. I'll get to that in a little bit. But um, so yeah, it has been rough. The person that got it the worst was Maria. She actually is outside today with Warren and Peter. They went to check traps and she's like, do you think I could go along with them? And she's been gradually getting better. She's starting to eat more. But boy, if you thought that she was little before, 10 days of sickness to her little body really, really made her just, like, just shrink. She really shrunk. Here we go. It is already Tuesday of the week that we are going to be celebrating Christmas here. I'm just giving you guys a little um, background. This is just like, you know, I'm just like speaking to my friends here if I was chatting with friends over coffee or something. So with all the sickness, I also got sick. Um, with a head cold type of a thing and then Sam also got it. Ours really only lasted about 48 hours of really down and out and then we were kind of able to move around and get some things done but just sort of moving slow you know kind of that that tired and slow but not really flat on your back kind of sickness. So then yesterday we were out of town quite a distance out of town for a funeral and here we are, we have Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and a little bit of Friday to prep for Christmas. And I don't really have anything, I shouldn't say not anything, I have a little bit done. I have a little bit done, not nearly what I would have had done if we hadn't just been sick. We do have some presents. So last night, actually I told Warren, I said, yes. I have to get a couple presents wrapped. So we did wrap a couple of presents, which is exciting. Um, I thought really I, my, I had set my goal for wrapping two and look it, we actually got one, two, three. We got some back in there, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and nine over there. And oh, I want to show you our tree situation this oh, year. Wow. So we brought up the alpine tree. We don't have it really, f I mean, to me, it would be perfectly decorated. Oh, yeah. I have some, the new ornaments that the kids made at the, uh, at the Home Depot. I think they called it like little builder's workshop or something. So I have the ornaments that the kids made there. Good morning, Joe. Morning. <laughs> Good morning. And then Warren brought in a birch tree yeah, this year. He kind of mentioned it and I was like, I love that idea. So he brought in a birch tree um, and he like used a bigger birch tree to kind of make a base so you could see the white. And I was good with it like this with candy canes. I just thought it looked festive and simple and country, but the kids were a little sad. <laughs> to hear that that would be it. So I do want to find some red lights and I do want to bring up ornaments this week. So I want to get Christmas decorations put up this week. And to top it all off this week, we have doctor appointments. Today is Joe's big heart appointment. So when doctor? Joe was just a day, yes, you're going to the doctor today. Just a day before Joe was four months old, he had a um, AVSD, that is an atrial ventricular septal oh, no. defect and he had that repaired. And that was, yes, they were waiting for him to get to nine pounds. He was just, I think, like an ounce shy of nine pounds at the day before his four month, um, like four month old birthday. And they got him in for surgery. So anyway, so he had that repaired. And so he has to go in. Um, he had obviously, like in his younger years and toddler years, he had far more heart um, appointments. But 
now it's been four years or is this a three it's either a three or a four year appointment i'm not sure which one but it's big it's going to be all afternoon we're going to be up at the clinic and it's just going to be hours and hours so we have that i also somehow like months and months ago scheduled well child visits for joseph peter and maria for thursday <laughs> so lots of things are pulling us away from the house this week and I'm feeling some pressure. I'm feeling some pressure. I know it's going to get done. So I, I mean, I've been doing this enough years and experiencing this pressure for enough years to know that it all ends up working out. But in the meantime, there's a lot of pressure and nothing else goes away, right? The laundry still piles up. The dishes still have to be done. Everyone still needs to eat meals right now. Everybody's still just everything and doesn't go away. So anyway, what we're gonna do, you wanna show your new Christmas present? Yep. Yep, look at your cool shirt. Isn't that cool, just add snow. Oh, there you are, you're smiling too. <laughs> so this was from his godparents. He got that yesterday when we went to the funeral. And he got a coloring book. And um, 10 markers. And markers, show us the coloring book. Yeah. No, like, let me see the front of the coloring book. What coloring book did you get? Colors of the World, Coloring and Activity Book. Have you colored anything in there yet? Yes. Show me. I'm not sure it. Show me what you colored. I'm not sure. Oh, you're not sure if you colored anything yet? Oh, you colored. Looks like you colored a little girl's face. That's cute. Looks like they are at the Taj Mahal. Is that the only one you colored so far? Yes. Okay. Can I too far? You're not too far, are you? All right. Well... What we're going to do, Joe, is put on aprons, and we are going to make some cookie dough. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Stop. Come back. Why are you running away from me? <laughs> Why are you running away from me? <laughs> so over the weekend, I was asking everybody, like... What cookies? I think I can make four cookies this week. I figured, I assumed that I could get four batches of cookies made this week for Friday night, specifically for that Christmas celebration. And they had requested spritz, chocolate crinkles, peanut blossoms, and cutouts. So Joe and I are going to make the cutout cookie dough right now. I do like that to chill. I know I say before, I've said many times, well, hello. I've said, Hello, guys. I've said many times before that I don't normally chill cookie dough, but I do like to chill cutouts. Make dough. Okay, Joe, which one do you want to make? Do you want to make the deluxe sugar cookies? That that Butter recipe? Sugar. Or do you want to make Peter's Christmas cutouts? Which one? No, we're not making Grandma's peanut butter cookies today. We're going to make cutouts, but which recipe should we do? You have to say Peter's or Deluxe? Deluxe. Deluxe, okay. So what we need is we need butter. Can you get a whole box of butter out of the refrigerator? Right there. there, one egg. Um, okay, you open one stick and I'll open one stick. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. We're gonna cream the butter first and get it all nice and fluffy. Make sure you get all that paper off. I don't want any paper Rip in the cookies, okay? Look, it has like a little fold thing that you can unfold. See? Do it. You do it. You do it. Look at that little hunk. You got all the paper off of it? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, ma'am. Put that down and put it on low. Me? Yes, you. Joe is going to put in one and a half cups of flour, or flour, that's powdered sugar. All the way, dump it in all the way, then we'll, then we'll fill it up one more time. Now first, a little underwhelming, so we'll put a little extra in this one. Okay, crack in that egg. Oh 
remember, no shells. Shells? Yeah, we don't want any shells. Did it work pretty good? Yes, sir. Stop calling me sir. I don't like that. Stop. I'm trying to button your apron. <coughs> your apron is screwed up. Excuse me. Excuse me. Bring out the garbage. Mm. Okay, I'm going to use a half a teaspoon of almond extract as well as a teaspoon of vanilla. Like that. Scrape all that oh, stuff okay. off, okay? We need a teaspoon of both baking soda and cream of tartar. All right, put in two and a half cups of flour now. Just dump the whole thing in. <laughs> patience, patience. That looks great. That was one. There's one. This will be two. And two. And four. And we need a half. Okay, there you are. Just. I'm just a little bit of big. No, and a half. Yeah, just. No, oh. And I'll just turn it up to number one. Okay. You can put it in the sink. All right, so I just have this wrapped in some in some wax paper here. We're gonna put this in the fridge and probably make these. You know what? I have no idea when we're gonna make these. Was baking hard work? Uh huh. <laughs> You're starving, huh? All right. Well, Joe's hungry. He thinks it's a beautiful day. It's uh, extremely cloudy, extremely windy. It is. 31 and we're supposed to get a storm the um, forecast is that for after 7 p.m tonight it's supposed to start getting maybe um, snowy slippery icy any or all of the above <laughs> okay i'm back it's only five minutes later i washed up my uh, kitchenaid bowl and mixer and everything and i figure since they're still out on the trap line and joe really wanted to go and do some coloring in his new coloring book i thought i would just do chocolate crinkles because did i get that right they wanted spritz peanut blossoms chocolate crinkles and cutouts yes and chocolate crinkles need to chill chocolate crinkles is in cookbook number one uh the deluxe sugar cookies were in cookbook number two is that where they are Cookbook number two, page like 64, I think. We're on page 62 of cookbook one, and this is chocolate crinkles. So, oh boy, you guys, wasn't even thinking about this. I better, I need to see if I actually have unsweetened chocolate squares. Woo, woo, let's see. What do we have going on here? Unsweetened, unsweetened. So in this box, this is unsweetened chocolate. I need four, four ounces, and one of these complete boxes is called four ounces. This one is only one ounce. What do we have in this one? Oh, this is a brand new box. Perfect. But what I'm gonna do now is just get this broken up into small pieces. Put it in here and get this melting in the microwave. And then I'm just going to get that mixed up in that glass bowl. So my KitchenAid bowl is available for another type of cookie. So I'm going to look at the spritz cookie recipe. Spritz has to be in the first cookbook. We call those candy cane, okay. Candy cane cookies. I always use this as my spritz. I need butter and shortening and powdered sugar and egg and almond and vanilla and flour and salt and food coloring. It's basically like the cutout cookies, isn't it? Basically, basically. 
over the years I found that when melting chocolate it's best to melt it almost all the way in the last few pieces to just melt by stirring it around the already stirring it in the already melted chocolate it just reduces the chance of burning have you ever burnt chocolate like melted chocolate yeah give this video a thumbs up if you've ever done that <laughs> and you know the smell you know the smell of burnt chocolate see there were a few little pieces in there and now it's all melted and i didn't burn it and that's awesome all right i have my four ounces of chocolate i need a half cup of oil and two cups of granulated white sugar This last bag of sugar I got actually had a big hard lump in it. Sugar breaks up easily though. Just kind of scrape at it. So I need two cups of white sugar. Whoa, guess I didn't have that in there all the way. Well, that's weird. You weird. There we go. All right, we're gonna do four eggs, but just one at a time. We're gonna do two cups of flour. It feels a little strange to me to only be making a single batch of all of these cookies. There was definitely a time, and I'm not really sure how I made that happen when I had little like babies and toddlers and all seven of the kids at home, but I used to do double or triple batches of so many. I'm gonna put in the other ingredients as well here while I'm, let's not get too, too distracted and start making mistakes, but I don't know how I used to do that, but the idea of making a single batch of cookies was not even on my radar. So that was two cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking powder. I need a half teaspoon of salt. The one teaspoon, I go half. But, but now, just a single batch. That's what I'm doing today, just a single batch of each one. I'm just gonna give this a scrape just to be sure Just to be sure that I got everything stirred in from the bottom. All right, this makes me so happy to have this dough done also, because that one has to chill. I was thinking about it, and I'm pretty sure that how I did cookies all those years ago, I did a lot at night. So our older kids, when they were, well, yeah, pretty much our, our oldest kids. When they were babies and toddlers, um, like up to even six, seven years old, they used to go to bed by seven o'clock or just a little bit after that. And so I would spend a lot of time in the kitchen baking late at night. Now I tend to make cookies more just like for the occasion. So rather than making Christmas cookies and saving them all in containers and everything, uh, now I do a lot more, like I was in a cookie exchange, I made the cookies for the cookie exchange and then whatever was left, we, we just enjoyed those and we ate those. And now we're gonna be celebrating our like big family Christmas on Friday. I'm making the four types of cookies I'm not making like two batches so that we have some more for the next week when we have Christmas Eve and everything like that. I'm just making the ones that we're gonna eat then. I mean, if we happen to have some left, I can always pop those in the freezer, but if we don't, we don't. And I'm not, um, I'm not upset about that. I've kind of learned how to just accept simplicity as I age. <laughs> I have to soften the butter for the spritz, one half cup. Okay, like I said before, the, the recipe that I use for spritz is in cookbook one and it's called candy cane cookies. You can shape this, you, you can divide this dough in half, color half of it red, leave half of it the 
creamy white, divide it into little sections, roll it into ropes, twist it up for candy canes, or you can make it into spritz. That was two teaspoons of almond extract, a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and now I'm putting in two and a half cups of flour and a scant half teaspoon of salt. So this is a quarter teaspoon. I'm going to almost fill it and almost fill it. <laughs> If it were up to me, I would leave that salt out of these cookies completely. But we've had this discussion before. Warren loves cookies made with shortening and salt. And he can tell, too. So it isn't like I can just trick him and put butter in or something like that. He can tell right away. At this point, I like to put my food coloring in just to be sure that it gets very, very well mixed. I have paste food coloring today. It doesn't matter to me if I use paste or liquid. Um, it's really just whatever I have on hand. All right, that mixed in perfectly. I never get it right on the first try. I always get it, it's always too light and I always have to add more food coloring, but that's just right. Since I'll be putting this dough into my cookie press. I know the size of my cookie press, so what I did is I just rolled this into two like little logs here and I'll chill it that way. So then when it comes time to put this into the cookie press, you guys know what I mean, a cookie press like this, then I can just take this little lid off here, slide that dough in and I will be ready to press those out. So just trying to do a few things here to make the actual cookie baking process go smoothly. Next up, we are going, we are moving to cookbook two. I'm going to do peanut blossoms. So I'm gonna get the dough mixed up for this. And then, oh my goodness, I was not expecting this, but I will have all four of my doughs ready. We'll bake. I don't know what day this week, but we will bake. <laughs> Okay, so the peanut blossom dough is done. I realized that my camera had turned off. This is really basic. I can show you guys the recipe here. Peanut blossoms, shortening, peanut butter, brown sugar, white sugar. Mix that all together, creamy. Add an egg, mix that in well. Then flour, salt, baking soda. I always put in the one cup of flour with the salt and the baking soda first. Then add in the two tablespoons of milk plus the teaspoon of vanilla. Mix that all up, then add add in the three quarters cup of sifted flour and get it mixed. Today, after Joe's doctor appointment, we'll stop at Fleet Farm and hopefully find the chocolate stars. I don't usually use the chocolate kiss kisses with these. We just tend to like the chocolate stars. That little bit of a flatter chocolate. It doesn't poke the roof of your mouth. Anyway, I'm going to get this chilling. Well, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to have a slice of harvest loaf. So probably you've seen that video already where I made harvest loaf. I know that I showed the recipe in there. This is one of my favorite like childhood memories. And I know I I wrote this in the cookbook as well, but this recipe, the harvest loaf, my mom would make 25 loaves. I don't even know how many, so, so many loaves of Harvest Loaf in these same little bread pans that I'm using. <laughs> they, we would make a double batch, which would fill four of those small loaf pans. And then she literally gave this out to everybody, to Sunday school teachers, to the ladies at her church group, to 
All my aunts and uncles got a loaf for Christmas. Our neighbors, the mail carrier, like anybody that she could think of that needed a Christmas present got a loaf of Harvest Loaf from her. She would wrap it first in saran wrap, then wrap it in aluminum foil, and then she would put the curling ribbon, either red or green, and then put it in the, center it on the like top center. You know, she would crisscross the ribbon over the loaf, and then one little curl on each piece of ribbon and put a little sticker on there that said, you know, to whoever from Suzanne and Jennifer. So I just, <laughs> Joe's giving his heart away. <laughs> he loves singing all those uh, like today bebop Christmas songs. All right, so I'm gonna sit down and have a slice of harvest loaf and I poured myself a little glass of milk here. Every time I try to film, all they do, blow their nose, cough, cough, cough. <laughs> all right. Um, Math is all finished and we are still reading from the book The Scavengers and so I told them that I would read two chapters here today. Joe and I have to leave in, I can't see the clock from here, what does that say? Joe and I have to leave in 30 minutes so I think we might get two chapters read guys but we might only be able to do one because Joe and I still have to eat something before we go. It's 11 so Joe and I are going to eat quick here. We're just having some of the leftover chicken roll-ups. I warmed it up in the oven. I've kind of been doing that a lot lately rather than using the microwave as much. I've just been putting like the leftover casserole or we'll just kind of spread things out on a cookie sheet and put it right in the oven and just heat it that way. Just find that some, some things actually taste a lot better that way. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that in the oven and everyone else can eat in a little bit. But like I said, Joe and I have to get going to his doctor appointment. Well, Joe, what did the doctor say? I'm not sure. You're not sure what she said? No. She said, everything looks fantastic. That's what she said. <laughs> she said, everything looks fantastic. So everything was really, really good. His cardiologist said that he really, he doesn't have to come back for three years and probably an appointment like today, the style where they have to do all the tests and all the heart tests and monitoring and pictures and the um, echo and all that kind of thing, probably for like another six years. So that was fantastic news, um, although now he's so easy to take to the doctor. <laughs> he's made such, it's just been such a change over the last probably, I would say, 12 months, probably over the last year. It's been such a huge change with going to the doctor, and now he's just like so easy to take. Um, so now it's no big deal, whereas before when we I had to go, Shrek. you love Shrek. She let you watch Shrek, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah, so um, anyway, room. yeah, years ago when, well, like just prior to a year ago, he, it was so hard to take, to take him to the doctor, so much, it was just, it was hard, very, very hard. So anyway, now you let them do anything. Yeah. You let them put the... Yeah. You let them put the jelly on your chest. Uh, jelly and yeah. sandwich. Oh, you want a sandwich? Yep. He's been telling me time for lunch ever since we got there. And lunch. We, we ate lunch before we left home. Anyway, it is, I don't know. Let me see. Maybe I could take out my phone and find out what time it is. It's 3.46. So we got there at 1.15 or his first appointment 46. was 1.15. It's 3.46. We have to go to what? Fleet Farm. We have to buy some chocolate stars for making the cookies and we need to get home. All right. Well, we almost did it. We almost went into Fleet Farm and didn't look at a million things. <laughs> yeah? Go around to the other Super side. Windy. Super windy. Yeah. It is so windy. Whew. All right, well, we found the chocolate stars, but let me show you. We even had to ask because we looked so many times. Okay, it says chocolate stars, but then look, those are supposed to be the chocolate stars. They're like, they're just like a little dollop. They're really quite ugly. They are not like the chocolate stars of yesteryear. So that was a bummer. But anyway, they're still going to taste delicious. Everyone is still going to eat the cookies. But I can guarantee you, everyone's going to be like, what did you put on top of these? What did you put on top of these? I need a... 
I'm going to need a marquee on Friday night to say, Jenkins Fleet Farm <laughs> messed up their chocolate stars. They don't look like stars anymore. Because um, I know they're going to ask me that. Just don't eat. No, we're not eating those. Peace. We're not going to start eating those. Peace. You're going to movie night tonight and you're having pizza. No chili? No chili. What are you, your dad? Yeah. I'm just eating at home. Of course we're vlogging in the wind. Of course we're vlogging in the wind. All right, well, we were just shopping over at Maurice's. Emily got lots of stuff and Lexi, I don't know if she wants to be in a video, but I'll Lexi got video. lots of stuff. <laughs> and I found a few things. So we're just having fun, having kind of a shopping night. Now Maria has to do Secret Santa shopping. Cart. Do we need a cart? Maybe a basket. A yes, I need a cart because I need to get some groceries too. Good morning, everybody. We're back and we are starting our morning. Number one, everything's been canceled. So piano's canceled, homeschool co-op is canceled, which in my book couldn't have come at a better time. Um, it's icy and rainy and it's supposed to be snowy. And anyway, we get to stay home and get lots of things done. We're starting with dishes. And what did you tell me, Peter? I just hate doing these pot, these casserole things. He's washing a casserole pan and he's over there just, just huffing and puffing and he's like, I hate washing these. But you know what, Peter? I don't think you're the only one. Should we have people leave their least favorite thing to wash in the comments? And I'll read them yeah, to you. Yeah, 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 that would yeah, be fun, yeah, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, let us know. Let Peter know. What's your least favorite thing to wash? Is it a casserole pan that mom reheated the casserole in the oven so everything got baked onto the edge? <laughs> That's the worst. Well, we're going to let these things drip dry for a little bit. We're going to read. I said to the kids yesterday, I said to the kids yesterday that I would read two chapters, but the day. We only had time for one before Joe and I had to uh, eat lunch and go for his appointment. And so we're going to start here by reading two chapters today out of the well, Scavengers. Two chapters, I need to check traffic. Oh yeah. So we're going to read two chapters from Scavengers. Then we are going to fold laundry, right Maria? Yes, we are going to fold laundry. Joe is in t-shirt and shorts, I so I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> What'd you do, take a bath in the in the water? Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> so that's kind of where the day is going right now. And then I am super excited. We are gonna actually make the cookies today. <gasps> Yesterday I was just like, when am I gonna get these cookies made? We're, we were gonna be gone all day today, not home until four o'clock. And um, even the church cleaning. So. I mean, everything that we were supposed to do today that was going to take us away all day has gotten canceled. So we are going to work on cookies after we do some reading. Like that? Yep. For lunch, we're gonna have some chicken noodle soup here. I made this a couple days ago, and so. It's I know, it's already 105, Peter. Yes, it is. We're eating a little bit later. So we. <laughs> lots of Christmas singing going on here. So I spared you guys the arguing uh, over, um, what were we doing before? Folding laundry. It's amazing <laughs> how much arguing can take place. Well, we're just folding simple laundry. All right, so we got all that done, which was a lot. It was a lot, and so I mean, to their credit, they did help, but there definitely was some arguing. Don't pat yourself on the back. If you didn't argue, then you could have patted yourself on the back. But anyway, now we're just kind of waiting for the soup to heat up so we can have some lunch here, and then we are going to move on to the cookies. 
Okay, it's cookie making time. So I pulled out the spritz dough and sprinkles. this is, yep, we got the sprinkles. We always put little sprinkles on our, um, Christmas on our Christmas trees. Oh, like ornaments. And then here is the little press or the little, little shape. Just gonna get that put in here. Let's motion it, 375 degrees. These are only going to bake for about five minutes. And I did a pretty good job getting that to the shape, didn't I? Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Take some of the dough off. You can see the Christmas tree. Yes, you can. All right, so let's, so the best way, sometimes you have to scrap the first couple. Eat them <laughs> right away. The first couple always take a little bit just to get the right pressure, or the right amount of like turns. Hey, look at that one. That one's beautiful. That one is beautiful, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Look at mom. Get it right away. Usually we have to eat a few. That one's a little, a yeah, little wonky, okay. but that's okay. We'll leave it. You're good at this. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been doing it a long time, Maria. So, Maria, you can start in. Sprinkles. Maybe I should start on this side and work this way. I like these sprinkles for ornaments. These are brand new. So I just pulled out the peanut blossom dough and I have four cookie pans and we have those all full with the trees. I have a little bit of tree dough left, we'll get to that, um, but I just wanna keep on getting the cookies ready to go. So I have some wax paper here. I'm going to roll the peanut blossom dough and then Maria is going to roll them into sugar and place them on this little piece of wax paper. That way we can get this part done even though we don't have any cookie pans or cookie sheets ready to go. Done. Our first pan of spritz is going to be done in 30 seconds. Do we need to test them? Pardon me? Do we need to test them? What do you mean by test them? Like try it. <laughs> like, Are you my cookie tester? Yeah. Okay. Like, we gotta do that. Like we gotta make sure we we didn't do something wrong. Maria and I have all of the peanut blossom balls ready to go. We are going to move on to, Maria, we're going to move on to chocolate crinkles next. Mm -hmm. We do have a video going. Ooh. This is from Forgotten Ways. Decker. Is it Forgotten Way or Forgotten Ways Farm? Anyway, mm -hmm. I really enjoy watching her channel, and I'm not really sure how I came across it. If she left a comment here or if someone else left a comment saying you should uh, check out her channel. But anyway, look at that. She is making, her daughter actually, I think is making a grazing board or a charcuterie board or there's so many fancy terms. I mean, forever, we just called it a veggie tray or a snacking tray or a cheese and sausage tray. And that meant there might be pickles on the tray. There might be olives on the tray. There's gonna be sausage and cheese and all the things. But anyway, now there's all these fancy words for it and we go with it. Grazing, uh, grazing tray or a charcuterie tray or sorry, a grazing board or a charcuterie board. Lots of names for it now. When you're making cookies, just be aware that if you're going from dark pans to light pans, that the lighter pans, you're gonna to want to bake maybe a little longer 
or you might be thinking the opposite way. The darker pans you want to bake, uh, to keep in for a little bit shorter time, just because they will bake differently. The spritz recipe makes a lot. I mean, that is a lot of cookies right there. And then I still have this pan to bake as well as one in the oven. All right, I'm gonna give you guys a little peek here. I was just looking out the window and I see that Warren is putting the blade on. He actually got a brand new blade for the tractor. I think he's pretty excited about it. He, I'm pretty sure that he has never had an enclosed cab tractor for plowing um, with a blade on the front. So anyway, he's really, really thrilled about this. I hope it's all working out right. We are supposed to be getting, I mean, look at, it's just been like raining and whatever all day long today, but we're supposed to be getting somewhere in the vicinity of like 10 to 12 inches of snow. So he's like, you know, I better get that on. So he's out there. I wouldn't say scrambling, I don't think, but he is, um, he is trying to work quick. He's putting the shoes on. That's what guides the plow so it doesn't dig into the ground. And I know he had to hook up some sort of hydraulics as well. Oh, and now he's going to show us what it can do. My timer is going off in the oven right now. I really got to get over there and tend to the cookies. So with the chocolate crinkle dough, you really, really want to make sure that it's very well chilled and not, and then in between like making pans or cookies or whatever, definitely put it back in the refrigerator or wherever it is that you put your dough to chill. Chocolate crinkle dough is pretty much like a brownie batter. And so you, if you can imagine trying to roll a brownie batter between your warm hands, it's really a mess. So you want it to be really, really chilled. So this works best. I found with an actual cookie scoop because you can do the least amount of rolling because it kind of comes out already round. So then you've got to roll those around in there and then you're going to put them here. Now your hands are going to get very messy though, okay? It's really messy. Uh huh. I turned the oven to 350 degrees because the first two cookies that we made needed 375 degrees. Uh, and so now we're working through, chocolate crinkles are a brownie style cookie and so you really don't wanna over bake them, otherwise they will get to be hard. And I don't know, nobody, nobody wants a hard brownie, right? Um, so these have to go in for about seven minutes. I have the light pans in, and then I also have some of them on dark pans. So around seven or eight minutes for the chocolate crinkles. And then I always like to like underbake them and then let them cool on the pan for just a minute or two. I just looked up and I noticed that my camera was turned off, so I'm not really sure what all you saw, what all happened here, but anyway, I picked out my favorite cookie cutters that I wanted to use on the cutouts, and I'm gonna get some of this dough rolled, and then I'm gonna call the kids to come over and cut the cookies, because I know that they're gonna wanna do that. But I should have brought my dough out a little bit ahead of time. It's a little, you know, I had it in the fridge overnight, so it's pretty cold right now. Right in the middle, huh? Wasn't really quite where I wanted it. Help. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I like to kind of wiggle it a little. All right, now shake it into my hand. Mm -hmm. There we go. Whoop, dip it in the flour. All right, now find another good spot over here someplace. You just gotta make sure that it's on the dough. Mm -hmm. And now Peter is jumping in, he's rolling. Remember to turn it to get it as even as possible if you can. Looks like, what did he already do? He made some bells and some reindeer. What are you gonna do next? Trees? I'm gonna do snowmen. Snowmen next, okay. I wanted to give you a quick peek of what I'm doing here for supper. It's kind of sneaking up on me here. It's already after five o'clock. We ate lunch real late, so we're not super hungry right now, but by the time I get all this ready, I think, will be hungry. So anyway, I brought up one jar, it's just one quart, oh, I need to get the rest of that out of there, of stew. This is venison stew, and then what I'm gonna do is add another quart of water with some uh, beef soup base. And I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see what that looks like, and I think that's kind of what we're gonna be having for supper tonight. It's gonna be not a stew, but it's gonna be more of a beef or a venison vegetable soup. I did not have better than bouillon, which is what I was hoping to have. Um, I had chicken, but I didn't want to use that. I wanted the beef. So I just used three beef bouillon cubes in here with a quart of water and a quart of my, um, my stew. And I tasted it. It tastes really good. We are gonna have this along with the pepper jack cheese. I have applesauce, I have lots more. I have many more quarts where this one came from. I have a little bit of canned fruit still hanging around and we have some crackers. So that is going to make our supper here on this, what is it, Wednesday night. Okay, it's time to move on to um, wrapping some presents. So we have Christmas tomorrow <laughs> and I do not feel ready. It's 11 o'clock right now and we have to leave for doctor appointments at 11.45. So um, I'm just trying to wrap some Christmas presents for like our older kids right now, the ones that will be home tomorrow that won't be here on Christmas Eve. I know a lot of you watching are parents of adult kids who don't live at home anymore. And it can be a trick, isn't it, to try to get, obviously you're, you wanna get presents that they're gonna like, but to try to make things look even. So it's always like the big question, do we make things look even in sort of like, usually what Warren and I do is lay everything out on the bed we kind of go, okay, so we have these guys. Do their presents look even? Even if maybe the price is not exactly the same, at least it looks even. And then we kind of lay out the girls. Okay, do the girls look even? But even that can get kind of tricky. We have done it where it's like, we try within like $5 to get everything as even as possible money-wise. But sometimes that can be tricky too because especially for littler kids. It doesn't matter if it was a $3 gift or a $55 gift. Sometimes it's that one gift matches one gift. If someone else got two $5 gifts to total 10 and you got one $25 gift, you might feel slighted if you're a little child. So 
Ah, the Christmas, the Christmas giving. It sometimes can get to be a little bit, um, I mean, I love it. I absolutely love it. But sometimes it gets to be a little bit of a trick. Doctor appointments were great. And we're home. Yeah, and Joe is out helping to shovel off the patio. It is time for me to make some supper. But Warren gets to use his new, uh, like the new snowplow blade. So he's just been, we got home and him and Sam, Sam's rolling snow, he's plowing snow. There's just a lot going on. There was a lot, wasn't there, Peter? Yeah. <laughs> like, wow, it's busy here. It does. I need help. You need help zipping? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. It's cold. It just check it. Tonight for supper, we are going to have pepper steak. This is out of cookbook number one. I was talking with Warren last night. I don't think that I mentioned this, that we actually have our hot tub in the basement. I mean, we used to have a hot tub in the basement. Then we bought filters, off-brand filters from Amazon, and those filters ended up, I think they had like too much filtration, and it ended up burning out the pump. So then, we did, then we were without a hot tub for quite a while. Then I bought another hot tub when we finally found them last, like going into the summer. And so I picked one up and we never set it up for the whole summer or even fall. And we didn't set it up until, I think it was after, was it after Harvest Maria that we finally set up the hot tub? Yeah. And, and excuse me, and we set it up down in the basement. We've actually, at first we had it outside and we really liked it outside, but it just seems like in the summer, um, by the time it cools off enough to want to use the hot tub, it's so late at night. And so we just find that we use it a lot in the winter in the basement. All right. So anyway, after we had gotten out of the hot tub last night, I said, oh, wait, let's not turn the lights off. I need to pick up, I need to pick out some meat for tomorrow night's supper to have it thawed. And I was kind of looking around, looking around, and I had a couple different ideas. And when I mentioned pepper steak, Warren was like, yes, let's do pepper steak. So I have my venison here. I'm actually using some tenderloin. So I have, look at that. I have exactly two and a half pounds, and that is just what the recipe calls for. So I don't have to do any halving or doubling or anything like that. So awesome. So two and a half pounds. I'm going to get this meat sliced up real thin, and I'm going to get my pepper... I do not have red pepper, but I do have <laughs> sliced green peppers in the freezer, and then I'm going to get an onion and get that, or two onions, get those chunked up, and have everything ready to go, because this is this happens pretty quick. So once you uh, get your pan hot, this actually all comes together quite quickly up here, so I am also going to get my rice started, but not until I have everything chopped up. Pepper steak is all finished. I sauteed the vegetables and meat separately. Then I put in the sauce, which actually tonight I had, when I was looking, I was out of brown gravy packets. So I actually just made kind of my own brown gravy packet in here. I took about three tablespoons of cornstarch. <laughs> I took about three tablespoons of cornstarch in here with about two teaspoons of a beef bouillon, like beef soup base, and then I just put in the pepper, just like the recipe calls for. I put in the pepper as well as the ground ginger and the soy sauce and the water, and I just mixed it all up, and I made that into a makeshift um, 
brown gravy packet and that worked just fine. So that's kind of a tip for you guys. If you don't have, don't have a brown gravy packet or like a turkey gravy or chicken gravy packet and the recipe calls for it, just take two to three tablespoons of cornstarch and then the seasonings like beef bouillon, hey Joe, <laughs> beef bouillon, soup base or chicken or turkey or whatever like that and then put in some pepper and maybe some parsley if you want to really just kind of season it up that's basically what a gravy packet is and then just mix it with one cup of cold water and it works i've done it lots and lots of times okay so now over here we have the rice and yep the rice oh i just spilled okay well Anyway, um, the rice is ready. We're also going to have some canned peaches and just a little bit of pepper jack cheese. <laughs> All right, good morning everybody. It's Friday, it's the day that we are celebrating Christmas and but we are out running around here getting a last, getting a few things. So both Joe and Maria had piano lessons which had been canceled due to sickness and then ice and then finally today they had a piano lesson. I also was picking up a couple, um, a couple different things that I ordered here. So I have hats now for sale that say A Country Life on them. I will show you guys. Let's see if I can show you what one of them looks like. So the gray have Wisconsin outlined in a red with a country life. And then I have burgundy hats. It's hard to get everything out here. And it is snowing again and the roads are so slippery. And then I also, this is something brand new that I have not even, piece of cardboard on there, that I, ha I don't even have listed on the website yet. But anyway, I have aprons. This is the same apron that I wear, my favorite black apron with the little red and white gingham. And since I'm in the kitchen, so I had those printed. So be on the lookout. Those will be listed on the website soon. Actually, I actually, I'm pretty sure Emily actually already has the listing ready to go. We just have to hit go live. So um, yeah, be watching for that stuff. And this is what it's looking like outside today. It is snowy. And it's kind of funny because so many things were canceled the last couple of days due to ice and snow. And now actually today, the roads are so slippery. So, so slippery. So next up, it's off to the grocery store. I had plans all week of getting there earlier, but it just seemed like two days with doctor's appointments and those are like out of town anyway. It was just, it just didn't happen. It did not happen. And then with everything canceled the last couple of days, or not canceled, but closed, um, you know, you just think, oh, the roads are gonna be really, really bad. Well, then they, I don't know. I don't think that they were probably as bad as what they thought they were gonna be. But here we are, Friday, and I'm doing my grocery shopping for tonight. I did have to kind of change my plan up. We're gonna be doing kind of like heavy hors d'oeuvres tonight. We're not gonna have a full supper meal, but just heavy hors d'oeuvres, which was the plan anyway. I think we're going to Walmart because like there's a few things that I need that I know Aldi will not have, like artichoke hearts and 
although they do have the chips that I want, but I probably can find something similar at Walmart. So off to Walmart. Well, I was thinking that I would do some little chicken salad sandwiches for tonight because we're trying to stick with finger food. And I don't know if I told you guys, but I said, hey Warren, what should we do for finger food? He's like, what about a crock pot of pork and beans? <laughs> and maybe some potato salad. I was like, not quite the finger food I was thinking of. Anyway, I was thinking that since I'm, you know, kind of under a time crunch today, I would pick up some of this rotisserie chicken just to make some quick chicken salad. But look at that, $12.37, no way. I thought it was like seven, and I thought seven I could do. But over 12, looks like I'm buying some chicken breast today. Squirt and grapes. Okay, well, Maria's we got been. Our whole list. We got our whole list. Perfect. Well, then let's get out of here, huh? Yeah. All right, we got the milk going into the crate. <laughs> we are not going to have a mess today, are we? Yeah. Yeah. No. No mess today. Get back here. What are you going to put in here, Joe? Okay, it's a book. I check it. Our home actually we've been home for quite a while a and the two gallons of milk made it into the refrigerator without hitting the garage floor yay yay and now just showing you guys a quick little grocery haul this is like the pre well we can't even I guess we can call it pre Christmas because it is before Christmas but it is the day you know that we're celebrating with our um, all of our adult kids and our younger kids too okay Honey Nut Cheerios, kicks. This was funny. Peter saw the kicks and he's like, oh, you got the knockoff tricks, I see. I was like, no, kicks is name brand and that's just how they are. They're not colored. Picked up some O's. It's been a long time since we've had this cereal. And then some Cinnamon Crunch. I mentioned to you that we're going to be doing some little um, chicken salad sandwiches tonight. So I picked up some croissants. And here are the cranberries for the chicken salad sandwiches. A couple loaves of bread. Maria is going to put together a Christmas tree like made out of grapes. Just, you know, the shape on a pan. And so she's going to get these grapes washed up and do that. Picked up some squirt for making brandy old fa or sorry whiskey old fashions tonight, and then some root beer. I also have two bottles of the sparkling grape juice. I have that chilling right now for tonight, and then three different bags of chips. So these black bean and garlic sun chips, and then Santitas the white corn. They just these two here look like they would be good options for they look like they would be good options for the spinach artichoke dip that I want that I'm going to be making here in just a couple minutes. So here's the parmesan and romano cheese mixed together. For that, the artichoke hearts, sour cream, some diced green chilies, here's the chopped spinach, and it's still quite frozen so we're going to have to get that to thaw here so that we can get the water squeezed out of that some sugar cubes for the whiskey old fashions and then some popcorn chicken for tonight and then mm -hmm. here's the chicken that i ended up getting so the cheapest pack of just chicken breast at walmart was 12 dollars. so i was like okay do i just go with the rotisserie for also a little over 12 do i buy fresh chicken that i have to bring home and cook up quick. Well, then I th had the thought, what about this canned chicken? It's not something I tend to buy on a regular basis by any means. I kind of forget that they even have it available. Anyway, I went down that aisle and wow, they have a lot of options. Dark meat chicken, chicken breast, they had turkey, they had beef. I had no idea that they had beef like this in a can. Uh, they had beef flavored um, like um, they had beef seasoned for fajitas, all kinds of options. Well, this was just over $9, so still expensive, but at least I don't have to cook that up today. We can just go straight into making the chicken salad. And then some Kleenexes because we are in that season, and oh my gosh, 
I think we've probably gone through like 25 boxes of tissues in the last 12 days. And then some bathroom tissue. I just like to grab a couple of those every time I'm at Walmart so that I don't ever run out. And that's everything. That was just like over $100 for all of this. So I didn't think that was that bad. I thought that prices were eh, pretty comparable to what they have been for like the last probably six, eight weeks. And you're going to get that to thaw? Yep. Just by squeezing it? Karate chopping it? <laughs> All right. Well, we need to get some things going here. Of course, the black rug needs to be vacuumed. I also want to run the vacuum on the hardwood floor. Did you wash off the table, Maria? No. Okay. Here's why don't you? Spot. Okay. Why don't you wash off the table? Because then we're going to get it looking really pretty. Um, I'm still <clears throat> deciding. Usually, what I do is I put some food down the center of this table so that people can still sit down around the table if they'd like. And then I also will put food on the island here, at least on kind of like that two-thirds of the island, so then we still have some spots available for people to kind of sit around the island if they want to. The first thing that I'm going to assemble is the spinach artichoke dip because this should be in the crock pot for about 40 minutes or so. So I did just put in a block of cream cheese. I cut my, this is a liner, and I cut the liner down about three inches just so I didn't have quite so much liner overhanging because this is only a four quart um, crock pot it's a small one and honestly this is one of my favorites it's just the right size for so many things all right we need 16 ounces of sour cream and everything is just going to go right into this crock pot and I'm going to let it get nice and hot well and then I'm going to stir it up Oh, I thought this would just sort of come out in one big wow. So if too much butter makes you a bit squeamish, <laughs> close your eyes for this part. Here's my spinach. I pressed out all of the moisture, which is probably where all the vitamins are, and that's probably why this spinach um, recipe tastes so good, right? All right, artichoke hearts are going in. Oh, I see I missed one. One thing that makes them really, really easy to chop up is to use a kitchen shears. So I just chop. I guess I missed a couple. The green chilies. And then one and a half plus one, one and a half cups of Parmesan, plus one fourth cup of Romano cheese, it's one and three quarters. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just using this, it's mixed Parmesan and Romano, and it works great for this. And there's one cup. Oh, it's just about the whole can it looks like. Yep, there we go, it was one whole, eight ounce container. And we need a tablespoon of chopped garlic. All right, and that literally took me just about 10 minutes. I did have to take a phone call in the middle, so that took a few minutes, but it was about 10 minutes total time to put this together. And now I'm gonna put this onto low here. Well, I have to go and plug it in at the counter, but I'm going to plug it in, put it at low, and then just let this warm. At about 40 minutes, I'll come back and I will give it a good stir and just make sure that everything is combining nicely. Next up, I'm going to put together the cranberry chicken salad. Maria is back behind me washing grapes. And normally when I put together cranberry chicken salad, I make a lot, like way more than two cups of chicken. I know this is more than two cups of chicken. I think I'm just going to use two cans, though, and see how far that gets me because we are we are going to have quite a spread of food here tonight. So Emily is bringing meatballs. Nick is bringing a cheese and sausage tray, and I would think that he'd probably bring some crackers with that. Amber is bringing cake balls. 
Hey. And so, and then we have our four different types of cookies that we made and we'll have the popcorn chicken in the air fryer. We'll do the dip, you know, the artichoke dip and we will have the chicken salad sandwiches, pickles, other random chips, the grapes. So we're going to have plenty, plenty of food. So I don't think that I'm going to need to make a giant batch of chicken salad. Although, you know what? Tomorrow, we're going to want to have chicken salad, aren't we? I know Warren's going to want to have chicken salad tomorrow. So I might as well. I might as well just make a big old batch of chicken salad. And what we don't eat today, we'll have tomorrow. All right, so that's three cans of chicken and I bet if I measured that that is going to be somewhere in the vicinity of three and a half to four cups so I'm gonna do a double Thank <laughs> you. 